I'm going to give you another one. Ooh, that's a good guess, uh, but it's not Arthur Lee. No. Right, OK. Uh, well, there'll be more clues and uh, quotations later on, but more importantly, what have we got now? Oh, well, we are going now live once again to our mate BC Camp Light. Brian, hello, mate. This has been fascinating seeing the two of you work. <laughs> yeah. This is my first time, this is my debut here. You're just it's used lovely. to me. You're just used to me bumbling away on my own in the corner, aren't you? But just seeing two geniuses at work like this, it must be mind blowing. Two people it, bumbling it away. It's yeah. almost overwhelming. Oh. Some simpatico. Love oh, it. Oh god, I'm inspiring. Glad to hear it. I we hope... need to put that on a t-shirt <laughs> or a tea towel. Long may it continue. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. This mm. sort of um, rambling nonsense. But there you go. Here we are. It's great to have you here and um, and playing live for us as well. How's I'm absolutely honoured. I'm still kind of basking in the glow I'm well sure. you can bask away mate because um <laughs> I, i've got a, a serious question because of, and I, there aren't many of them but one slightly serious question the last time that you were on we worked out that bc uh, bc camp like he was never on the radar of elton john in fact if anything he didn't like you but now he's a fan has he been in touch huge fan now yeah he's mm. well he catches up doesn't he you know i mean yeah. where we lead i'm starting to have bad feelings about him I think he, I can't even remember what the negative comment he sent about me, but basically wouldn't play one of my records. And then, uh, so this last one that, that came out, he really liked it, and uh, I'm back on board. But the thing is that he's just doing his last tour ever, isn't he? It's a bit late. I mean, he could have taken you around the world if he had got on board a little bit earlier. Yeah, it would have been nice. I was watching Glastonbury, and he brought out some, like, 17-year-old kid, like, I'm going to make this kid a star. It's like, what about me? I'm 44. Yeah, hello. I've been doing this for 20 years. Elton. Hello. Um, but of all the times that you've been on, I don't think I've ever asked you uh, who were your kind of formative influences. Who were, who were the people that you looked up to as you were growing up? Um, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, I mean, Elton was in there, uh, lots of classical stuff. Whenever I start talking about classical music, people just think I'm being pretentious, but... No, that figures, it would be yeah. part of it, yeah. Loads of, loads of classical stuff. My dad was a huge Pavarotti fan. Right, okay. Um, I mean, yeah. so, I mean, the difference between Jerry Lee is that, I mean, he was a fantastic pianist, we know that, obviously, but he used to play with his feet, and you, you're partial to banging about a bit on that, aren't you? Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, and typically, when I'm on this on your show, I'm jumping around and smashing stuff and acting like an animal. But today, I've I've challenged myself to be uh, sad. Well, we bring we bring out the worst in people. We I'm just know trying that. to. I don't know. I want to make. I've been like kind of depressed all week, so I'm trying to make myself cry and make your audience um, uncomfortable. Oh, well, that's our job. We <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can I ask you? I have done some extensive research as well as listening to your records, of course. But you're not a fan of the. Speaking of the piano, you're not a fan of the public piano. Is that correct? Is it fair to say? Oh, that? you mean like when a piano is in a train station or something? Exactly that. Exactly that. And people come along and they have a go on it. Well, speaking of. You know, sounding pretentious. Here, I, I'm just going to jump in the deep end here. I just, I don't know. I, it bothers me. Mm. You see these Instagram videos, and you're like, you would never believe that this guy, you know, this guy could play chopsticks in a train station. <laughs> it's like, who cares? <laughs> I don't know. I see a piano kind of like, you know, it's an instrument to be uh, carefully used by Respected. people that, that love mm. it. Like, I, I wouldn't, you wouldn't leave a, a, a dentist drill. And be like, you wouldn't believe how close this guy came to giving a root canal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he got it slightly wrong, but you yeah, know, know, he gave it hey. a try. There's actually there was some great footage actually recently of Sparks. I think they were in the, the uh, in, in Paris actually in the train station, almost inevitably, uh, with a piano, and they were doing uh, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Yeah, and fine, because they're dentists. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But nobody took any notice of him. It was criminal. It probably is all oh, bloody hell. Somebody else on the piano again. Bang, yeah, I know. bang. Hanging away. Yeah, it's because they because they were good, Mark, and we all know that good music takes a long time for people to catch on to. And this one's called. <laughs> uh, how has it been? Uh, here's another serious question for you. Playing uh, the record came out in May. How has it been playing these songs live? I know you've been playing live before that. And you're going to play them again um, imminently as well. Um, how has it been playing playing this album live? Well, it's been really cool to play shows. Uh, where there's uh, people in the audience. Mm -hmm. So that's been a big difference for this record. <laughs> but this is this was my breakup record. So of course like every time you had you know you play these songs you're reliving all that a little bit. But um you know it's uh, this is my most successful record which I say about 10 times a day to whoever <laughs> will listen. 
<laughs> so it's fun. It's fun to play the songs to people that want to hear them, and uh, and and lots of people say, you know, that it helps them, and it gets me through the day. And the the, the record, there are el- various extra elements on this record, which are. Um, Interested to see how they translate to the live performance of some of these songs as well. Has that been something you'd had to get your head around? Well, yeah. Um, I want people to like when they come to my shows to be like, like, whoa, that was. Uh, I didn't expect them to be able to pull that off. So mm. that's why I have a massive six-piece band that I can't afford. And <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'd, I'd rather just give it, you know, give the audience. Uh, as much as they can handle, then try to strip it back and stuff like that. I mean, it's funny because I, obviously I follow you on Twitter and it, and it was during the making of this album you were always calling out for different people to play different instruments that aren't within your band. We yeah. know that. And it got obviously more and more ambitious and it, and it probably took longer than you expected, did it, to make the album? Well, I made it. I made the album and then my fiancé left me and I made it again. Right. So yeah, it took twice, about twice as long. <laughs> right, okay. But I mean, twice the, as long. the actual process of putting these sh- uh, songs together yeah. and saying, oh, I want a trombone. I well, remember- yeah, I ended up literally having most of the Liverpool Philharmonic on, on yeah. the record. <laughs> what I was going to say, is that the next step? I mean, obviously, the, the, the records have got more and more ambitious. Would that be an ambition? Would you seriously like to work with, with an orchestra? Um, <laughs> there's, let's just say there's might be some stuff in the works for next year. Ooh. That, uh, I, I can't say. How, how stupid is that in this industry? Like anybody really cares, you know, oh, BC Can't Play has a secret. It's like, Come on, it'll be, it'll be quoted on the stock exchange. Immediately yeah, you say that and the next thing you know, you get that all the time. Mayhem like, uh, tomorrow. Uh, agents or something like you, you can't say that till next Thursday. Who <laughs> cares? Exactly that, Nobody mate. Nobody cares. It's exactly that. It's like, okay, we, you know, I'm going to tell you this, but don't tell anyone. Yeah. And it is just the fact Stupid that there's a tour stuff. happening. And it's like, yeah, all right, then I won't tell anyone. Yeah. But, you know. Hey, you know what, Mark? Then... The heck with it. Next year, I'm doing something with an orchestra. Yay. In magic. I think, I think All we, right? I think we worked it. that out, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? I wasn't, really, I wasn't really being cryptic before that. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, if you, if you leave it long enough, I'll learn to play the violin and I'll come along with you. You, got, you have just under a year, my friend. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, what would you like to do now? You're going to play three numbers for us. Uh, I'm going to do... Let's see. What's, what's the most likely to make me cry here? All right, I'm going to do... A song that's not mine, um, it's by Neil Young, actually, and it makes me weep, so uh, get ready to have your toes curled, audience. <laughs> 